Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds. Welcome to video notes for topic 1.2, which is terrestrial or land-based biomes. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe the global distribution and the environmental conditions of land-based or terrestrial biomes. We'll talk about how the plants and animals that live in a biome are adapted to that unique climate. We'll go over major must-know biomes for apes. We'll talk about how the worldwide distribution of biomes is subject to change if our climate changes. And finally, the environmental science skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will be explaining an environmental concept or process. So biomes are areas that share a combination of average yearly temperature and precipitation, also known as climate. This is really important to point out. Climate is just a combination of average temperature and precipitation trends over a year. So we can look at some examples of well-known biomes. We have the rainforest. Of course, this is going to be a biome that over the course of the year is going to have really, really high rainfall as well as really, really warm temperatures. Whereas the desert is going to be a biome that's characterized by very, very low precipitation. Now, it may also have high temperatures, but that low precipitation is the big distinguisher between the tropical rainforest and the desert. Really important to point out that the community of organisms that live in biomes are uniquely adapted to the climate of those biomes. So this is our sort of thinking like a mountain opportunity because instead of thinking of the biome and trying to memorize what organisms can survive there, just remember that any organism in a biome must be uniquely adapted to survive those climate conditions. So we've got some examples here. We have camels and cacti. Camels have hum which store energy in the form of fat for times when they are unable to find energy for a long period of time. Cacti have thick waxy cuticles or coats that basically prevent water loss through evaporation. So those are both adaptations that allow those organisms to survive the harsh, dry conditions of the desert. We have shrubs and wildflowers. They're going to have long, deep roots that store a lot of energy so that when there's wildfires that devastate the landscape of the grasslands that they live in, they're going to be able to quickly regrow because they've stored so much energy deep in the ground in their roots. So again, the organisms of a biome are uniquely adapted to survive the conditions, meaning the climate, of that biome. Now we'll talk about characteristics of biomes. The two most important characteristics of a biome are its temperature and precipitation. In fact, they are the defining characteristics. So if we look at a graph here, we'll see that we have different ranges of both temperature and precipitation. For, so for instance, if we look at the tropical seasonal forest, also known as the savanna, we'll notice that they range in annual precipitation from maybe 60 or 75 centimeters of annual precipitation all the way up to maybe 280. And then if we look at the temperature, we'll notice that those tropical seasonal forests are gonna range from, oh, maybe 18 degrees or so, all the way up to about 29 degrees Celsius. So just keep in mind, that all of these biomes are defined by the range of precipitation and temperature found in them. What we'll notice is that these temperature and precipitation ranges will also predict where on Earth we can find the biomes. So we can look at the biomes mapped across Earth's surface and we'll see that there's very predictable patterns. If we look at biomes such as the tundra and the boreal forest, if you remember from our graph, they're very low in precipitation and they're also colder biomes. So we're gonna see them farther away from the equator, concentrated around 60 degrees latitude. Now, if we look at the temperate biomes, these are gonna be things like temperate grasslands, temperate seasonal forests. We're gonna see them concentrated on the middle latitudes between 30 and 60. This is because these are latitudes that receive a moderate amount of rainfall and have a moderate temperature year round. So they're gonna be reasonably warm, but they're gonna get somewhat cool in the winter. And then finally, we have the tropical biomes. So this would be the tropical rainforest and the tropical seasonal forest or the savanna. And we'll notice that they're concentrated around the equator. And that's going to be characterized by really warm temperatures because it gets the most direct sunlight and really high precipitation. So again, instead of trying to memorize all of these different biomes, we need to think about how these patterns of temperature and precipitation are influenced by the distance that we are from the equator. And that's going to tell us where we're going to find different biomes. We'll see our colder, drier biomes up near 60 degrees and north. So the further away we get from the equator, we'll see our temperate biomes in those middle latitudes around 30 to 60 degrees. And then we'll see our tropical, our really warm and our really rainy biomes near the equator. Another very important characteristic of biomes is their nutrient availability. 
Now, this is because plants need soil nutrients in order to grow. So the availability of the nutrients in the soil is ultimately going to determine which plants and how many species of plants can survive in different biomes. So we have a great example here. We can think about the tundra. Now you could memorize that the tundra has a lot of snow and ice, and so it doesn't have as many plant species, but we want to try to actually understand the reasoning behind that. So because the soil in the tundra is permanently frozen year round, that limits the decomposition of organic matter, which recycles nutrients. So because those soils are so frozen for so much of the year, we don't recycle a lot of nutrients. And so there are low nutrient levels in the soil. That's gonna also lead to low water availability due to it being frozen. And then finally, that's gonna result in very few plants able to survive these conditions. So we can see here that the active layer, the layer of the soil that thaws out each year and is available for plant growth is very small compared to the permafrost. Again, that results in very few species of plants being able to survive here and therefore fewer animal species as well. Now we can look at a few more examples. The tropical rainforest, even though it has a ton of plant growth and you might think it has really nutrient rich soil, is actually gonna be quite nutrient poor. And it's because there are so many plants that are competing for the nutrients that they get quickly absorbed in the soil as soon as they're made available. Then we have the boreal forest. Boreal forests, remember, are cold. They're gonna be dominated by coniferous trees like pine trees, aspen, spruce. And they're gonna also have nutrient poor soils, but for a different reason. It's because the temperature is so low for much of the year that the decomposers like earthworms and fungi are not gonna be able to break down dead organic matter fast enough to cycle those nutrients quickly. Then finally, we have the temperate forests. Those are the forests that you're used to seeing in West Michigan and across much of the US. They have very high nutrient levels in the soil and that's because they have broad leaves like oaks and maples that drop their leaves each fall. That leads to a lot of organic matter on the forest floor and their moderate temperatures are gonna allow for a faster rate of decomposition, which makes those nutrients available in the soil. So this is a great example of how another biome characteristic, nutrient availability, ultimately determines which plants and which animals can survive in that biome. And finally, we'll talk about how biomes can shift in their locations. That is because climate is not stable on Earth. Climate is subject to human activities that are changing it rapidly right now. And so as the climate continues to warm, that will shift biomes such as the boreal forest further north as those soils that used to be frozen for much of the year are thawing out and able to have the large tree species of a boreal forest now grow in those conditions. They're also going to lose some of their southern range as it becomes too warm for the trees that dominate the boreal forest biome, such as aspen and spruce. So we have here the current range from 1971 to 2000 of the aspen, which again is a very characteristic tree species found in the boreal forest versus the predicted change in that biome from 2071 to 2100. We notice that the predicted range is far further north. Again, that's due to the soils that were previously frozen, thawing out and enabling tree growth further north. And a lot of those Southern regions that we see in the Northern US and in Southern Canada becoming too warm for these tree species. We can see an actual picture of this progress happening. These are photos of the same exact Arctic plot of land in 1962 and then again in 2004. And we can see that the forest is slowly creeping northward as global warming makes those previously too cold soils warm enough for the boreal forest tree species to survive in. Our practice FRQ for topic 1.2 today will involve the skill of concept explanation. So I want you to identify one characteristic of a biome and then explain how that characteristic determines the community of organisms that are found in that biome. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future APES video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.